enthalpy. Enthalpy is a funny word. Um, enthalpy is the amount of thermal energy that's either given off or absorbed by a chemical reaction. It's a lot like heat, but there's a subtle distinction. We've talked about exothermic and endothermic. Exothermic reaction gives off heat, the heat exits. Endothermic reaction absorbs energy, heat energy. It goes into the reaction. So the enthalpy of reaction is, is symbolized as delta H with the subscript Rxn. Um, Rxn is the chemist abbreviation for the word reaction. And so enthalpy of reaction, it's sometimes called the heat of reaction, the amount of energy or heat that flows when a reaction occurs at constant pressure. The sign of the, this heat change or flow is going to be either positive or negative, and that's going to depend on direction. So if the energy is flowing out of the chemical system, then that's like a withdrawal from your checking account or from your wallet, and that has a negative sign. I have negative feelings when money leaves my wallet. When money comes into my wallet, I feel positively about that, right? So energy flowing into the system is like a deposit, and that's a positive sign. In an exothermic reaction, like we mentioned, heat energy is released. So we can draw an energy diagram here as we go up on the screen, energy is increasing. In an exothermic reaction, the reactants start out with a high amount of energy. They release some of that energy into the surroundings and the products now have lower energy because the wallet has lost money. So the reactants were high energy, high money, the products are low. Delta H is negative because energy left, money left the wallet. This is an endothermic reaction. It's absorbing energy from the surroundings. So it starts with the reactants having low energy. The energy change is positive. Money's coming into my wallet, and then the products have higher energy. The products are richer in energy than the reactants were. If we look at um, the combustion of methane, which is the main component of natural gas, methane reacts with oxygen, forming carbon dioxide and water. We've learned to recognize that as a combustion reaction. And here it's saying the heat of reaction or the enthalpy of reaction is minus 802.3 kilojoules. This negative sign tells me that the energy is leaving the reaction, going into the surroundings. As someone on the outside, as part of the surroundings, I feel that heat coming out. You get your hand too close to this reaction and you're going to burn yourself. This is an exothermic reaction. This amount of energy depends on how much methane burns, right? If you have a tiny little cylinder of methane and it burns, it's going to give off some heat. If you have a giant tanker of methane that catches on fire and burns, it's going to give off more heat. So the amount of energy that's released depends on how much stuff is reacting. So by convention, if I associate this with this chemical reaction, it means that this amount of energy is given off for the molar quantities in the reaction. For one mole of this, two moles of that, producing one mole of this, producing two moles of that. So there are conversion factors or unit relationships between this number and the equation. And I don't remember if I'm supposed to write these now, but I'm going to anyway, because I can. So we can say things like there's one mole of methane per minus 802.3 kilojoules of energy. Minus 802.3 kilojoules, ah, I left off the two, that's no good. Minus 802.3 kilojoules of energy is released for every two moles of oxygen that burns. So I can relate this to any of those. Any questions?
If you have an endothermic reaction, delta H is positive. This reaction happens to be endothermic. Nitrogen reaction with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide gas absorbs 182.6 kilojoules of energy. It will absorb that much energy for one mole of this, for one mole of that, or for every two moles of this that are produced. So we can calculate the amount of energy that's released or absorbed based on the masses of reactants and products. So, yeah, I mentioned this already. The amount of heat absorbed or released depends on the amounts of reactants. And we specify that amount in terms of the balanced chemical equation. It's for the amounts as written. So let's, let's do an example here, or look at an example. Um, here is propane. That's uh, LP gas. That's what you probably have in your gas uh, grill in the backyard. When one mole of propane is burned, it releases 2,044 kilojoules of energy. So one mole reacting with five moles of oxygen form three moles of CO2, four moles of water. That much energy is released, emitted. This is negative. It's leaving the reaction. From the reaction's point of view, this is negative. And so these ratios can give us information between amounts of reactants or products and the quantity of heat. So ammonia reacts with oxygen according to this reaction. And the heat of reaction is minus 906. Is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Exothermic. The heat is leaving the system. It always makes me want to say, Elvis has left the building. He wasn't in the building. Calculate the heat in kilojoules associated with the complete reaction of 155 grams of ammonium. Let's, this is still stoichiometry. It's just stoichiometry with energy. So I'm still going to use this equation to organize my information. 155 grams of ammonia. And the question is, how much heat? Well, this is the heat term over here. So this is the question mark. And they're asking for kilojoules. So what's our normal path for stoichiometry? Grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Well, we're starting with a mass. Um, but we're supposed to end with kilojoules. So grams at the end is not going to work. I can go from grams of ammonia to moles of ammonia using the molar mass. I actually don't need to go to moles of anything else because I can go directly to the energy. So I don't need to do this one either. I can go directly to kilojoules of energy because delta H is given. So 155 grams of ammonia. I'm going to figure out how many moles of ammonia that is. It's a three. And then I'm going to go to kilojoules. So putting my units in, and then grams of ammonia down here. I happen to remember from a previous slide what the molar mass of ammonia is, so we'll spare ourselves having to do that. It's 17.034. This term comes from the equation. In front of ammonia is the number 4. That means that 4 moles of ammonia will release that much heat. So 4 moles of ammonia, and then this is minus 906 kilojoules. So I've got 155 divided by 17.034 times negative 906, be careful with those minus signs, divided by 4. So my calculator is showing me minus 2061.025, the unit is kilojoules.
How many significant figures should that number have? Three. This number has three. That number has three. Those are whole numbers, but that does not mean they're exact counting numbers. So I should keep the two, the zero, and the six. And if I'm going to round this, I need to be careful because I'm rounding in the tens place. I'm rounding to the nearest ten. I can't call this 206. It would be minus 2060 kilojoules. Better put it in scientific notation first and then, can, then round it off. So the heat associated with this reaction is minus 2.06 times 10 to the third kilojoules. The way the question is phrased doesn't imply direction, emitted, absorbed. And so then I want to keep this minus sign. Any questions? Uh, yeah, we can do this. So here's another one. What mass of butane in grams is needed to produce this much heat? So over here, I want to produce 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules of heat. And the question is, what mass of CO2, no, what grams mass of butane? Okay, this is the butane. So grams, question mark. So this one's backwards, isn't it? I've got this amount of heat, and I'm trying to go over here. So I'm going to go from kilojoules to moles, and then to grams. I'm going to do this quick because we're running out of time. 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules. I'm going to convert to moles of ah, moles of <laughs> that isn't butane. Yeah, it is. Never mind. Oh, I think I need a vacation. It's only Tuesday. I need a vacation from my weekends. Is what I need. And then grams. and moles down here. So I make sure first that all the units cancel out. I can relate this number, the 2658, directly to any of these as molar amounts. Do not be disturbed that there's a fraction there. It's OK. Four moles of this will release that amount of energy. Four moles is going to give us minus 26. Five, eight. And then here, I need the molar mass of butane. 12.01 uh, times 4 plus 10 times 1.008. Um, well, that's wrong. There we go, 58.12. So 1.5 EE3 times 4 divided by negative 2658 times 58.12. My calculator is telling me negative 131 grams. Does that seem a little odd? Can you have negative mass? No, only in science fiction books. Well, what's up with that? These signs indicate the direction of the energy. OK? So here, what's, what mass is necessary to produce that much energy? When we say produce that much energy, if you want to be detailed about this, 
we should put a negative in front of the 1.5 because it's releasing 1.5. And so then we'll end up with positive 131. The tricky thing about the sign and energy is sometimes you have to ignore it and other times you really cannot ignore it and so that can be confusing. This would be rounded to 130 grams. Now just one more thing. In the homework, this has to do with the sign. A lot of times they just want the number because they're using words to express whether it's being absorbed or removed. So they'll say, well, what mass of, of butane is needed, or what, I'm sorry, what amount of energy is released when this happens? And if you put the negative in the answer box, it'll count it wrong. I don't really agree with that, but that's what it is. It said released, and so then you don't need the sign. So you just leave the sign off. So if you run into trouble with that on Mastering Chemistry, please text me and, and I'll help you out with that. Okay, see you on Thursday.